I wanted to give you an update on a project that's funded by the Florida Cattle Enhancement Board and that is on uh, broom sedge management. So this is a project that's been funded by the Florida Cattle Enhancement Board. Um, part of this project we actually started back in 2012 and another part we started in 2017. So I initially got involved in this project in the late 2000s because I started to see an increase in broom sedge. And some of the county faculty may remember that I asked them, find me pastures that have broom sedge because I want to go out and soil sample, get some idea of what's going on. And uh, <clears throat> thinking this, this would be a pretty easy cut and dry project. We'll have this done in a couple of years. We'll have some answers and we'll be ready to go. Um, quickly learned that there's not just two or three species of broom sedge, there's about 18. And quickly learned that some species do respond to soil pH, others don't. So I have uh, three species here. <clears throat> we tend to see these three in native areas, native rangeland. But every once in a while you'll find them in a bahia grass pasture too especially these two. Um, that's actually called purple blue stem. It has a purple tinge on the leaves. It has waxy leaves too. Its cousin, if you will, is a chalky blue stem. Both of them have a chalky substance on the leaf tissue. Just purple blue stem has more of a purple coloration on the leaves. So those two, if you have them in a bahia grass pasture, liming alone will transition that one out over time. So broom sedge has a lifespan of about three to five years. If you can start a management program on those, if your pH is low, then you're going to transition those out. Okay, so what's the problem? Well, other species of broom sedge that's probably more common, that's just simply called broom, broom sedge blue stem, it grows quite well at pH five and a half which is where our optimum is for bahia grass and limpo grass and yeah so you're kind of stuck with that one right the other one on the end is actually two the same same species in two pots that one will grow in ph levels up to eight so we have it in pastures from five and a half all the way up to eight so we have this range and soil pH where broom sedge will survive. So a lot of people thought initially, you raise soil pH, you get rid of it. And that's not necessarily the case. So our initial studies that we worked on started in 2012, we just, um, we had lime or no lime, depending on soil pH. If it needed it, then we added it. If it didn't need it, we didn't. We had uh, a treatment that was an N, P, and K treatment, so nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, that was 50 pounds of N, 25 pounds of P, and 50 pounds of potassium applied annually. And then we had with or without micronutrient mix. So some of the, some of the things that we were, we were thinking initially was that it's either a macronutrient issue or a micronutrient. So some of the pastures that we sampled in the late 2000s where folks had seen broom sedge decline, it had either been uh, amended with biosolids, which means you're getting phosphorus, or it was micronutrients. Um, so that's what led us down that roll. Okay, so what is soil rich in in Florida, macronutrient-wise? We mine it in this county especially. Phosphorus. Bahia grass is able to mine the phosphorus from deeper in the soil. Okay? So I wasn't sure that that was even going to be the answer. It is in other states, other, in the Midwest, where they've added phosphorus. Their broom sedge populations have gone down. Haven't went away, but they've gone down. So 
I had three locations for that initial trial. One was in Arcadia, one was across the pasture over there, another one was up in St. Cloud. Um, this location had purple blue stem. So liming alone, after two years, we started to see a decrease in density. And then with NP and K annually, we started to see a decrease there eventually as well. Now, we had years where there wasn't any difference between treatments. And I attribute that to the life cycle of the plant. Since it lives three to five years, you have death and germination, okay? In Arcadia, that had the bushy blue stem, the pH there was almost eight. And adding NP and K in that situation, after three years, we started to see a decline in bushy blue stem there. St. Cloud location, we never saw a thing happen. Nothing. So density absolutely stayed the same, and the bulk of it was just the regular broom sedge blue stem. All right, so why did we not see anything at St. Cloud, but we did here in an Arcadia? The biggest difference I can think of between the sites is that we mowed here in the fall before seed set. We mowed in Arcadia in the fall before seed set. By we, they mowed in Arcadia in the fall before seed set. St. Cloud did not get mowed. So is that another factor that we probably need to look at? Probably so. I need a clone. Um, so since we we're seeing some results from NP and K, we decided to start another trial in 2017. <clears throat> and there we looked at individual macronutrient applications. So we had treatments with N, we had treatments with P only, we had treatments with K only. And then we combined N and K, N and P, P and K, and then obviously the three-way. So after three years, both locations, I'm going to very much generalize this. You have the data in your handouts. So you can look at this later and call me if you have questions. Um, after three years, we did see a decline in broom sedge. What's interesting to me is that it was also the same broom sedge blue stem that we had at St. Cloud. Difference is we mowed at least once a year. Maybe, maybe not have been the same time every year, but the past years did get mowed. Um, I tried to look at it different ways from, I guess, an academic perspective, if you will. <clears throat> uh, when you just average all the treatments based on if it got fertilizer, potassium fertilizer or not, you, you definitely saw it. But then when I tried to analyze it based on which combination was the potassium with, it was never consistent. One year it might be with the three-way NP and K that you'd have the most reduction. The following year it might be just the N and K. Or one year it could be just the K application. It just really depended on where the plots were, you know, based on the life cycle of the broom sedge. All right, so take home on the fertility part of this is it'll depend on what your initial situation is in the pasture. So soil sampling is going to be very important. Got to figure out where your pH is. Got to figure out if the other macronutrients are really out of whack. Um, a lot of times we don't see a lot of potassium in our soil samples analysis, so that might be something to consider. Um, but how do you get rid of it, right? That's, that's what everybody wants to know. And unfortunately, I don't have great answers yet. I think you're looking at spot spraying or a weed wiper. Um, there are pictures in the presentation in your book where we did use a weed wiper here, it's been several years ago, um, on broom sedge in August, they were just starting to send up their columns and get ready to flower. And we wiped it two directions, 
10% glyphosate solution, we got about 60%, 70% control the following year. I was kind of surprised by that because it got mowed about a week after it was wiped. It's like, well, that's going to fail. But it actually worked okay. The next August, we came back, wiped it again. Those pastures have remained fairly clean. So once we got the broom sedge out, kept them somewhat fertilized, I mean, not 100% where they should be, we were able to keep them out and then just staying on top of it since then. Okay. Any questions? Did I see an increase with liming? I actually did not lime that location. We actually did um, elemental sulfur, hoping to decrease the soil pH over time, which we really didn't. Okay, so if the pH is 5 and you want to increase the soil pH, will you enhance the broom sedge? I think it'll depend on your fertility situation, Cliff. I, I really do. Based on what I've seen, 